whenever you're making a sequel to a movie whose reputation is as widely known as Predator, if you fail, then people are going to know it right away. It's a combination of the best of the practical world and the best of the digital world. It's a huge risk to do a scene like that. We all got thrown into the deep end of the pool together. If we failed in doing the Predator dog scene right, I think that there's a huge danger of losing the audience early in the film. What's the last thing you remember? There was a light, and then I was falling. Where the hell are we? Predators is about a group of um, elite killers who, unbeknownst to them, are transplanted from planet Earth to an alien planet. We need to work as a team. Does this look like a team-orientated group of individuals to you? It's essentially a game reserve, and uh, the Predators have been bringing nasty things from around the universe to gather here to be hunted. They can hear you, smell you, and see you. It's essentially a story about a bunch of Predators meeting a bunch of Predators. How do we kill them? However you can. One of the most challenging sequences in the movie is the predator hound sequence. This group is going through the jungle and they start hearing noises in the forest. They don't know what the sounds are, but they're alarmed. And then all of a sudden we reveal these alien creatures with horns growing out, four-legged dogs with big giant mouths that drool and blood coming out of them. The madness, of course, splits them up and they all go off into different directions, running for their lives. Creatively, it's a huge moment in the film to make sure that we nailed it because that's the first time you're gonna see anything predator ish in the movie. It comes with an extraordinary amount of pressure. You don't want to disappoint the fans. The audience is expecting really high quality creatures. It really has to be good. Because if that sequence doesn't work, it can really ruin the film. Without those dogs, you don't have a scene. No! Any decision we make creatively in the film, we always asked ourselves, does this fit into the Predator universe? We sat down and we started throwing out all sort of concept drawings. The first time that I read the script, there wasn't a lot of description about what these dogs looked like. They were just supposed to be these weird, feral, four-legged creatures. We start with some reference of dogs and saying, okay, what do we steal from the Predator world and what do we steal from the real world? I have to really trust my gut instincts as a fan, as a geek myself. What would I love seeing on screen? We didn't want it to look too much like a dragon, so we played with the teeth and we played with the shape of the head. You go down so many wrong avenues, but it helps you to get to those really cool ideas that really make that creature cool. When the horns were implemented, you've never seen that cocktail of an animal. It makes it look more dangerous. The intimidation factor is definitely present. When you see an alien dog with 20 horns on its back coming at you with teeth that are seven inches long, it's really scary. You want to shoot as much on set as possible. The more you can have on set, the more informs what happens digitally. Though CG is, is incredible and gets better every day, we try to incorporate as much puppeteering and as much practicals into a scene as we can. It helps the actors most certainly. It even helps the director of photography just to see what we're shooting. Because of the nature of these creatures that run four-legged, the idea uh, always was to create computer-generated version for the wide shots of them running, and then when we get into close proximity of them with the actors, then we would build an animatronic. There was a lot of engineering in terms of getting the head to move right. It took about six people to operate it. We probably had two of those dogs, and that's it. So the care that one must take uh, for those dogs is extraordinary. Within the Pred Hound scene, the most difficult moment was Stan's being attacked by the hound. It kind of represented in a micro way the entire struggle of the scene. Walt was dealing with a puppet and then the CG animal. And they said, you want me to start operating the dog kind of beforehand so you can see its movements? And I said, no, I want to be completely surprised. And they yelled action and the animatronics started to work and the dog started to move its head. 
and you're there, then you're in the moment. That was sweet. Let's go again right away. The puppet, when it was all up and running and moving and everybody was operating it, it was completely alive. And the horns were flapping around, and, and I'm just sitting there trying not to get my eye hooked on one of the horns, finding a place to, to stab this animal. I did get scared. I got so scared that I started yelling for help, and I meant it. I actually said, help me. I'm getting attacked by a goddamn alien dog. He gave it his all. He beat the shit out of the puppet. And he's struggling, and he's fighting, and he's acting. Ah. And he goes, <laughs> and literally busted the jaw. It was one of those things where I went, uh-oh. Damn actors. Hey, Walt, how about giving it your all next time? <laughs> good, I'm good. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> On this alien planet, these people have to fear for their lives. I think all the creatives behind the construction of this scene nailed it. I was surrounded by a lot of talented people. If goosebumps are a good gauge, then I think we're pretty good. Looking good there, boss. The dog attack sequence. It's a great appetizer to what's about to come.